Hey, welcome everyone back to the CISO IT podcast from Automox. My name is Jason Kikta and I'm the CISO here at Automox. And as always, we're going to be talking about uh, the intersection of security and IT. And this week, uh, I'm going to go a little bit off theme because uh, I was at um, RSA last week. So I want to talk a little bit both about what I saw there and also something uh, interesting that we here at Automox did. So first off, I'll start with RSA, uh, the RSA conference uh, 2024 out in San Francisco. So um, I unfortunately didn't get to see the whole thing um, due to some uh, scheduling surprises. I was only there for the last couple of days, but uh, as always, it was it was quite a whirlwind, and it was very interesting uh, to see, uh, you know. The various vendor booths on the floor, and there were some fun ones. I, I saw two, uh, Wiz and I think Jupiter One had sort of a, a you know convenience store, grocery store style uh, um, booth designs this year. So that was interesting. And then somebody had this like clean room that looked visually amazing, but also uh, slightly foreboding. Uh, and you know, lots of lots of companies with really neat themes. I saw some uh, some smaller ones who had you know like arcades and bars going uh, to as far as their booth theme. So uh, interesting stuff there. But on the product side, you know, it, it reminded me a lot of last year, which is a lot of products to find and not enough products to fix. And really, the thing that shown through for me is that. If I sent someone who was newer to security to RSA and asked them to sort of summarize it for me, I think they would tell me that, you know, we're just like one magic dashboard away from uh, solving security because it seems like there was um, an inordinate amount of focus on data visibility and on consolidating disparate uh sources of information into a single unified view. And and that is a good and worthy goal. Don't get me wrong. It's, it's really something that can save your team a lot of time. But on the other hand, it, it you know, there's, there's so much more to security and IT that we need to improve upon that, you know, one more magic dashboard isn't going to fix it. So uh, I remain RSA, uh, skeptical uh rsa conference skeptical um because i think it's just it's a little too much flash and not enough substance but one thing uh that was substantial there and the reason the the main reason that i went this year is that uh cisa the uh cybersecurity infrastructure security agency uh which is always a mouthful out of dhs they're the federal government agency that uh you know, looks out, they have the primary responsibility within the federal government civilian um, component to to look out for cybersecurity and to advocate for it. And they took what started a year ago as a paper on secure by design and the secure by design principles of how we can build and design better uh, and more secure software. And, you know, it went through all last year, they put out a revision of it in, I believe, October or November, and now bring it forward. And the big announcement was that they had a pledge uh, with 68 companies volunteer, voluntarily agreeing to um, to adhere to the pledge and and make significant progress over the next year in the secure implementing the secure by, by design principles. And I'm happy to say that Automox is one of those companies. Uh, and Honestly, as soon as I saw the text of the pledge, my immediate thought was, we should just sign this. Like this is, there is so much in here that we are already doing that is baked into our security culture that, um, you know, we've either done for a long time uh, or we, we do it to a degree. And if we just make these one or two modifications to be compliant with the pledge, uh, we'll be there. So that was about as close to to a uh, to no brainer as it gets uh, when it comes to security. You know, if you're already doing a lot of it, may as well get credit for it. And 
I think more importantly, it begins to introduce the idea of accountability that is so lacking from modern corporate security culture because too many uh, vendors out there just try to avoid accountability and, you know, keep the prospect of accountability to a minimum. And if you, if you sign this pledge and you, you know, you're taking a public promise that you're tying your reputation to that you're going to adhere to it and you're going to try and, you know, make significant investment to either, uh, to either uh, achieve or maintain those goals. And that's something that we just, we haven't seen. And, and it's probably, honestly, it's probably a precursor to some level of regulation or law. Uh, and, you know, better to do it now and get focused in that area than to try to do it later when you don't have the option. So I want to talk a little bit about the pledge and what's involved in it and why I think that they're, they're really good things. So the first one is multi-factor authentication. And th that is, again, somewhat obvious that using MFA uh, it, it is important, but it's, it's shocking to me how many businesses uh, and organizations do not have it in place. And I think we saw this recently play out in the news with uh, Change Healthcare and United Health. Uh, the parent company went in front of Congress and said, hey, we bought them, you know, not all that long ago. I think it was like 15 months, 18 months, you know, we're still integrating tech stacks. And they had, you know, single factor Citrix expo exposed to the internet and somebody, you know, did drive by and, and got the password. Uh, and that could have been through you know, credential stuffing if if there was no rate limiting on the password guessing, or it could have been a reused password that was exposed in different breach. Uh, I, I don't believe they know yet, but regardless, passwords are something that can get compromised. It, it's, it's possible, and if you don't turn on MFA on all of your services, then you're, you're you know, asking for trouble because there's nothing else to stop a bad actor from taking over that account on that service. Uh, and I think where it gets daunting is trying to think about how do I enable MFA on every single service and then enforce it uh, is where people get a little hung up, but that's where single sign on really makes it feasible for any size company, right? That single sign on mechanism that you can set up on all the services that allows you to do it once and then have it everywhere. As well as, you know, when you have to offboard an employee for whatever reason, you know, being able to shut down those accounts and shut them down quickly or suspend them in the case of a security incident. It's just really critical to have. And I think part of the stumbling block here is less so implementation and more so that, uh, you know, a lot of companies charge a premium. They, they treat these as magic enterprise features and want to, you know, significantly increase the cost of a contract. And, and frankly, I think that's, that's somewhat unethical. Uh, it, you know, it, it really ought to be just sort of included by default that you can turn on MFA and enable SSO because they're just, they're, they're such a cornerstone of modern security. Uh, likewise, with default passwords, default passwords have gotten many vendors, especially hardware hardware vendors, in trouble over the years. And you know, there's an easy workaround. At first, at initial setup, you force the person setting it up to set a secure password right then, and that's how you get around default passwords. And too often, that just that hasn't been done, uh, and it's it's caused an an inordinate amount of um, security incidents over the years relative to the the extreme ease of the fix. Uh, the next one is a little more complex, and it's reducing entire classes of vulnerability. So that's that's really that's where it gets very real uh, for a lot of vendors. Uh, is that you know. That one you have to stay on top of, right? So consistently forcing use of param parameterized queries to prevent SQL injection attacks, um, developing a memory safe roadmap, uh, providing secure defaults for developers, adopting web template frameworks with built-in protection against cross-site scripting, 
you know, these are all in the CISA guide and the pledge and, you know, making measure, measurable progress against those takes a lot of work. Uh, and it's, and if you're, you know, if unlike us, it's not already part of your engineering program, that can be pretty daunting, but making measurable progress doesn't mean, you know, that you're going to arrive there instantly. And, and honestly, even if you are already there, it's, it's not a destination, right? You're not actually there. It's, it's a continuous journey. It's a, um, it's a culture. It's a state of being that you have to constantly maintain, reinforce, check, recheck, uh, and verify. So, you know, that one, that one's a little higher of a bar security patches. Obviously I'm, I'm passionate about patching, uh, here at Automox and, and I tell you the, the beauty of working at a company that builds, uh, up an endpoint management solution where patching is a cornerstone is that I, unlike many of my counterparts get to be really aggressive with patching and I'm sure some of my users don't like it, but too bad. Uh, <laughs> that's, that's one Liberty that I take for myself is, is being really aggressive with patching, but you know, even if you're in a more constrained environment or you have, you know, limited ability to apply patches or you have to have a uh, longer or more meticulous, uh, maintenance windows, you know, having a priority to your patching, ensuring that you're producing, um, regular results, you know, that, that the patches are getting applied, that you have proof that the patches were applied, that you're tracking your performance over time, seeing whether, whether it's getting better or worse, you know, that is really the mark of a mature organization. And you, you have to use different strategies with different parts of your network. For example, with your servers, if you're not meeting your patching goals, then you need to be able to demonstrate that. And then you need to lobby for longer maintenance windows. If you're not meeting it in user space, you need to you know, do some user education and maybe get a little more aggressive with your patching, maybe set up uh, a patching timeframe for them. Teach them good habits. Teach them good habits about rebooting their systems on a regular basis because while modern OSs have lured us into not needing to reboot as often and the mindset that I never need to reboot, the reality is, is that systems perform better with regular reboot. You know, reboot once a week, at least once a week. And you're going to get a lot better performance out of either Mac or Windows and Linux, honestly, for that matter, as well as give that OS an opportunity to apply all the patches that it can't while it's it's up and running. So the next one, uh, again, ought to be sort of table stakes, uh, but a vulnerability disclosure policy and, you know, making it uh, things like a security dot text file. Um, you know, uh, building one and making it easily discoverable by researchers, really important things. Uh, and, you know, we run our own VDP in the house here and it's, it's always an adventure, but we've gotten some, you know, good finds from researchers and, and too often people deprioritize it because you end up getting a lot of low value things or informational things. And, and, in my mind, that's okay because you don't play it for the dozens and dozens of informational uh, notifications you get, let alone the duplicates. You're playing it for the one or two, you know, that medium or higher or even possibly a critical that somebody finds and it has a mechanism to let you know that's really important to have. And so, you know, while it's it's not always a lot of fun, it, it can pay off rather, uh, tremendously. So, you know, definitely a good thing to have, um, you know, and it, you should have your, uh, your CVEs, um, out there. They want, so CISA wants to have, you know, transparency in reporting that includes, you know, common weakness en enumeration, CWE, uh, common platform enumeration, CPE fields in every CVE, uh, record uh, and CVEs are common vulnerabilities and exposures, but you know, getting them into those common uh, machine readable formats is important, and you know, it just helps tooling to be able to find and identify it better and deal with it better, so that your customers can can stay protected. Evidence of intrusions again, one that 
seems straightforward and is is actually easy to implement from a you know the raw mechanics of it but is a little bit harder from the emotional level of um you know making it giving customers the ability to gather evidence of any kind of cybersecurity intrusion that may have affected the products this is probably a little more relevant in the on-prem hardware ma maker space but you know, it, it, there is an element of this for um, cloud providers and SaaS products, you know, being able to uh, provide logs, robust logs to your customers and retaining them for a set set time frame at no additional charge. You know, those things are important. And that's why, you know, we we have a policy here at Automox that we're, we're never going to charge for access to logs. And, you know, it's one of those things that, that, it's tempting to turn into a profit center, but in reality, you know, these are things that customers need to have assurance when using your product. And so it's not really a fair uh, request to, to ask them to pay for that. And, you know, you shouldn't, you know, I mean, obviously we're talking about long-term data retention I think that's probably fair game, but but access should never be a, a bargaining chip and, and customers should just be able to get that built in. So the bottom line I would say is I think the CISA uh, Secure by Design pledge uh, is a, a very good thing. I think it's good that 68 vendors signed it. I think there's a heck of a lot more to go and I hope many more of them will join Automox in signing it over the next year. And you can find it by by just searching for CISA Secure by Design Pledge or probably even Secure by Design Pledge. Um, but please give it a look. I think it'll, you know, even if you're not a software vendor, it'll probably give you some really good ideas for your own security program. And I think you'll enjoy it. Until next time, I've been Jason Kikta. And thanks for listening to the CISO IT podcast. And on behalf of all of us at Automox, stay safe out there and happy patching. Thanks.